that's so different than the traditional sales process, which is basically like show up, open up your jacket pocket, pitch a bunch of crap, right? And, you know, essentially be like a talking website, right? It's so true. All right. Welcome. We are here today with Coach Tiffany, who is the head coach of the Sales Insights Lab. Welcome, Tiffany. Hi. Good to be here. It's like to have you. And so what we're going to be talking about is objections. The dreaded four-letter word in sales that most salespeople spend their entire life trying to never get um, and trying to then overcome and all this stuff. So um, why don't we just start with what are some of the most common objections that, you know, that we hear about in our community and just in general? Like, well, let's go through, let's just kind of riff off some of the most common ones that, that we hear um, people talking about. There are so many, um, everything from like, you know, great. I just have to run this by my boss or my partner, um, all the way to, you know, I'll try it on my own to, um, you know, uh, I think I'm going to try what I've already got. Yeah. Yeah. Try what you got. The price is too high. Um, your competitors are cheaper. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so many uh, that, that we can talk about. Um, you know, I'm going to have to run this by my boss. Um, you know, and, and again, I think the objections, objections I want to focus on today are more kind of later in the sale. Of course, some people refer to like, you know, when you make a, pro- a prospecting call, like, you know, I don't have time for this right now. Like that, that, that's not, that's more kind of like just, just push back. But we're talking about like objections uh, that you get kind of after you've presented some version of your offering. Um, oh, and that's another one though, is, is, is like the timing's not right on this. So, um, so let's first start in terms of why people tend to get objections, because I think that's a, that's a really important place to start. Yeah. So, um, objections usually come up because something got missed earlier on and it's when you don't, you know, you aren't thorough enough in earlier parts of the conversation to really be able to avoid that happening in the first Mm. place. Mm. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like questions that you missed, like, uh, um, God, it's, it's hard to talk almost in theory. Um, but let's, let's pick an objection as, as an example. So let's take like the timing is just not right. Okay. So, what would be an example of something that someone might have missed in order to get this, this issue of timing is not just right? Goodness. Um, I think that timing is probably the, one of the more nuanced ones, but just a couple of places where it can mm-hmm. be missed comes down to understanding whether, you know, fully understanding whether the challenge is urgent right now, yeah. understanding yeah. what they're going through, right. Besides the, the challenges that they're facing. Um, and I think it's interesting because I think the timing one can also be a form of the prospect trying, being afraid of change and mm-hmm. really bringing up timing as this like fictitious, like I'm going to blame it on timing, but it's really something else. And it's funny because the reason that I say that is because I was in a sales situation a couple of months back where I brought up timing as an objection. And I have to, I had to handle the sale for the person, but then I was like, wait, I'm just, I'm objecting for no reason. I'm objecting because this is going to mean change. And I'm nervous about that. So I walk myself back through my own objection. Mm. Um, but it was just because I was feeling a little nervous about something else completely. So it wasn't, yeah. it had nothing to do with timing at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think also just to me, like taking t- t- the timing is just not right as an example. And again, we could pick out any objection. You can come up with a lot of reasons, but to me, a lot of times it just shows that it's like a cover for the fact that like, they're just not seeing enough value, right? It's either not a priority or they're not seeing enough value in what you have offered. And so like, and those, those are by the way, two different things, right? So on the one hand, it's like it, the, the challenges that they've discussed are just not a priority, which is something you've kind of really be dealing with during disqualification or that kind of initial discovery. And then the fact that they're not seeing enough value is more a throughout the entire process. Like they didn't, maybe they they didn't see, they didn't kind of make the connection between like how big their challenge is um, and how important it is to get there. And then how your solution is really going to connect those dots. Right. So are they really seeing that it's connecting those dots? And actually your example is a really good one too, where it's like, 
maybe the salesperson, like you knew the importance of the challenge, but, but it was like the, you felt like there might've been like some risk in the change and changing what you were doing. So it was like that connection from point A to point B or the bridge that they were creating wasn't um, super solid. And so, uh, so I think, I think recognizing, you know, why it's happening leads us to this next piece, which is how do we avoid it in the first place? And so let's talk a little bit about uh, objection avoidance. Yeah, I think objection avoidance is one of the reasons why I actually get excited about getting an objection because I think that so many people try to run so far from objections. Um, and then when they, when one comes up, they stress it and they're just mm. like, Oh no. And then in that moment of stress, they're trying so hard to put the sale back together in their own head that then they're just completely just over talk it. And it, then it's just lost. Yeah. So if we move objections into a place of like curiosity, and exploration, then all of a sudden yeah. there's a really tactical framework that you can use to, to make sure that you're learning from this experience. So in terms of, of an you know, objection happens and then it's like, but wait, why did that come up? What did I miss earlier on? Right. Was there a key concept? Did the prospect say something? Maybe it was just an offhand statement where I could have asked additional questions about that, but I missed it. And now it's coming back to bite me later on in the sale. Yeah, um, like like a good example of in terms of timing might be like, oh, yeah, you know, we're also working on three other projects mm -hmm. right right now. It's like most salespeople would just be like, oh, OK, cool. Yeah, three other projects. Great. So as I was saying, and they like go back to what they were saying instead of a good salesperson. So if I'm like, we'll just role play it. So if I'm like, yeah, so right now, you know, we're also working on three other projects um, at the same time. Yeah, that's super interesting, Mark. So walk me through how those three other projects affect what we're talking about today. Yeah. So, and now we're digging into it, right? We're like diving into the challenge because that could be the, the thing that's going to lead them to eventually be like, yeah, the time is not right. Cause I really have to focus on these three other projects. Right. And it's like, don't just, don't just like to your point, don't just run away from it and try to, um, you know, yeah. I think a lot of objections come up because we there's so much bad sales advice out there. And so many of us just feel like this little like, you know, jack in the box where we're waiting to share our benefits and share how much they're going to get out of it and stuff like that. So what I found is that and I did this back in the day where I'm like, let me just ask enough questions to see to get them to listen to what I have to offer. And then they're totally going to get it. It's totally going to make sense. And then you're like, hold up a second. Like I need to ask them the questions they need in order to understand their challenge and they need to understand how their challenge connects to what I have to offer. Yeah. Yeah. So there's obviously a lot going on there in that very uh, insightful ideas, but it's basically like we need to take them through a process of, of discovery to use more broad language, right? We call it disqualification, but to like really help them see and determine the magnitude of the challenge that they have and get a sense of the commitment to deal with that. Right. And then once we've going through understanding how important it is, you know, all that stuff. And then we're connecting a, a solution to that, assuming that they've shown enough commitment to get even, you know, some semblance of a presentation is like there's that's so different than the traditional sales process, which is basically like show up, open up your jacket pocket, pitch a bunch of crap, right? And you know, essentially be like a talking website, right? It's so true. Yeah. And that's definitely when people show up with these huge presentations with these huge pitch decks, and then it falls apart. And I certainly was in the space where I'm like, okay, I guess the presentation has to be prettier, or I guess the document has to be prettier. Yeah. It's like, Dude, it's not the presentation. <laughs> it's not the presentation. It's so not the presentation. Yeah. So I think this idea of avoidance, like I, I think this is really the bigger issue. Um, that most people face is like they're just following a process or they're not following a process at all that's taking them down a road where it's like they're pitching and the prospect like could have told them something that would have been really useful to explore um, that that might have stalled the sale 
whether it was about another decision maker, whether it was about the timing, whether it was about their commitment, whether it was about their budget, right? All this stuff that like we should have dealt with during that initial phase that we we didn't or we kind of glazed over it. And then we're getting into this place after the presentation. And so I think people like misdiagnose the problem, right? They're like, there's like a pain in their lower back. And so they're like, oh, there's something wrong with my lower back. But actually, as we all know, with spinal issues, like a lot of times pain in your lower back could actually have to do with vertebrae that's like in your neck or, or something else, right? So it's like, it's the same thing where it's like, we're, assign, we're, we're assigning blame with like my presentation, like you said, my presentation wasn't compelling enough. But like really the problem was, is that you just didn't dive deep enough in that dis- discovery or disqualification to understand what was really going on. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why like every objection is so meaningful and you're not going to learn without making the mistakes. Like you can't just learn without messing up a lot. So that's why you get an objection. It's like, Ooh, it's time. You know, something's going to happen. Either you're going to figure out how to work the objection so that you learn more about this prospect and you help them to not shoot themselves in the foot or that experience is going to help you with the next prospect and avoid letting that next guy shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> yeah, this idea of shooting themselves in the foot is right on. So yeah, so I think that, that probably is right into this next piece, which is, okay, so we've gone through, let's say we've gone through what we believe is a good discovery. We've presented a solution that we think is appropriate for the challenges that they've discussed. So like, we, let's say we, for the most part, we feel like we're pretty on track. Let's just take that assumption. Now we get a, an objection like, you know what, the timing on this just isn't right. Like, I'd like to revisit this in six weeks or, you know, three months. What's the process from that point of actually dealing with the objection of handling it? Yeah. So I think what's funny is that I'm going to, talk about this in two parts. First of all, most salespeople, what they will do is they'll just yeah. be like, no, 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 I'll tell you all the reasons why now is okay. And, and, and they just try just to saturate the prospects in all of the reasons why they're wrong. And I can tell you, I was selling for 15 years before I got the right training and that does not work. Never, ever have I experienced a prospect's mind being, oh yeah, you're right. You know, I'm going to go ahead and and move forward with this. Never. So what we need to do instead is slow it down. Don't be afraid of sitting in that space of objection. You know, be curious. Why is the prospect really saying these things? Yeah. So let's, let's first take the the part, the first part, which I think is, let's get into, we'll get into the kind of what you actually do. But, but I think this idea of like that we can somehow persuade, because that's the idea, right? Is like that we can persuade them away from the objection that they have right? Timing is just not right. You know, well, well, let me share with you actually why I think the timing is right. And now we're in this kind of like back and forth tug of war or like arm wrestling match with the prospect. And now we're like, we're literally in an argument with them. And, And we think like, to me, the problem with persuasion is that there's this assumption that like, we're somehow a step ahead of the prospect or the prospect is like kind of dumb. Right. Persuasion almost implies like this, like we're dealing with like a toddler. Right. And it's like, um, which of course is, which is ironic because as someone who has a toddler, there's, there's certainly no persuasion of a toddler, but, like, but, but I mean, I think that's really a problem. And, and when I listen to calls, when I hear people get objections, like even solid salespeople, a lot of times will go on for like they get an objection and then they talk for four friggin' minutes, five, six minutes, just like, babbling saying words and the prospect is like politely listening but like it's not moving the needle at all and that is crazy destructive to the sale you know it's like you're never going to persuade them simply by receive objection and just like like just throw up all over them all the reasons why their objection is either not valid or you know they should think a different way Exactly. And I think the more that you try to push, the more entrenched they become, which is really interesting. And then in addition to whatever objection they had, they'll usually come up with more at that point. And the goal of of appropriately (laughs) handling the objection is to slow it down and let them say what they need to say. 
because even if they don't say it, they're thinking it like letting them get it out of their mouth is the important thing so that you can understand where they're coming from and then approach a conversation from that standpoint, instead of all of the things, all the head trash that you're afraid of, of, you know, that maybe that they think you're too expensive, like all those things that you think are going on, let the other person say it. Yeah. So, so just like, I think this is a place to get into a little tactic. So like person says, um, you know, um, the the timing of this just isn't right. You know, can we table this for six weeks? Standard salesperson goes into, let me tell you all the reasons why this is the right time. What what would how would how would you address that? Yeah. So again, slowing the conversation down, really making sure that you're pausing through that, um, giving them some kind of like you know back and forth, some kind of make nice in the conversation where you're going to say like, oh, that's a really interesting statement help me understand what makes you say that and then getting them to go deeper into yeah. what's going on in their world or what they're seeing or what they're afraid of really. Yeah. Yeah. And not being in a rush to solve it. Right. Like that's the thing. It's like, it's like the, the, you know, people always make fun of um, like this idea of how like men always like when they're, when they're talking to their partner, it's like they want to like solve their partner's problems right away. So it's like, oh, you know, um, you know, you know, my, my wife is like, oh, you know, let me tell you what happened at work today. And it's like, rather than just kind of like listening, it's like, I'm as, as a guy, I just want to like immediately solve that. And it's like, we've got to break that mindset. And by the way, this is not a gendered thing at all because every salesperson I've ever listened to left to their own devices is going to try to solve the objection as quickly as possible. Even if they do some kind of initial kind of like digging, slowing it down, most salespeople are just dying to solve the objection so quick. It's like there's a, t it's like there's tension. It's like there's like a, a pin in their, like in their seat. And it's like, they just, like, they need to like solve it. You and, know, and obviously what's interesting the goal about is that is that. I think that solver mindset is really common because I certainly have that as well. And like, I'd have a friend come to me with problems. I'm like, what you need to do is X, Y, Z. <laughs> and I think that there's a correspondence. There's definitely a Venn diagram there between salespeople and our people that have to do sales and uh, that solver mindset. The issue is when you start yeah. to get good at slowing it down and asking questions, it affects the entirety of your sale, not just objections. Because one of the places where we get a lot of people um, having issues is in trying to solve during discovery, right? Like we're not solving anything right. in discovery. Right. We're, you're jumping yeah. into like, oh, I'm having this problem over here. Well, what you need to do is this. And it's like, no, 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 no. You haven't shown that you know their issues well enough. So once you can solve that, it, that solver issue in objections, you'll actually start to find that your discoveries go much better as well. Because that whole situation is just being slowed down and you're taking it step by step. Yeah, that's so true. Right. It's like, it's like the analogy of like, you walk into the doctor's office, the orthopedic surgeon, and you're like, Hey doc, my elbow hurts. And like the quack doctor is like, Oh, well, you know, we've got this incredible procedure called arthroscopic surgery and it's incredible. And he just like goes into this pitch. It's like no good doctor would do that. Right. They're going to slow it down really understand what's going on. I mean, assuming they're a good doctor and go through the process and just like a good salesperson whether it's in discovery or really any point in the sale, it's like, I think there's, and I, I really don't fully understand where it comes from kind of evolutionarily. I don't, I don't understand it, but it definitely is pretty consistent with almost everyone I've ever observed in sales left to their own devices is like, they're just dying to have the solution like a five-year-old in class answering a teacher's question of like, what's one plus one. Right. Like when they think they know the answer, they're just dying to get it off their chest. And it's like, slow it down and let the prospect talk because your stupid solution is like not, it's too early. Like get them to really fully dive in. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else you would add to this conversation around objections? Yeah. I think one other point that I would make is that the less that we can dread any specific sales situation and just accept it as an experience that we're either going to win from or we're going to learn from, the more we're going to be open to growing in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think, a big thing just in general with sales is like, just, it's okay. Like, if if you mess up on this set of objections, like, there's more opportunities, right? It's like, because I think the pressure to be perfect handling an objection 
is going to make you worse, right? It's like, just, you know, obviously you want to, like you said, either win or learn, right? And so it's like, learn from it, from the losses, but like, so what, you know, like we always say, some will, some won't. So what next? All right. Awesome. Thank you, Tiffany. This was awesome. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, then I have an amazing free training on the step-by-step -step formula to close more deals. Just click right here to get registered instantly. Seriously, just click right here. This is an in-depth training that will help you close more deals at higher prices, all while generating more meetings. Also, if you've got some value, please like this video below on YouTube and be sure to subscribe to my face, which means just right around here to just get a new video like this one each week.